Today I'm going to be the guinea pig. We've got a demonstration set up at the HeartMath Institute to illustrate the ways that human energy fields can influence other people who are the focus of their attention. I'm going to be connected up to this uh, computer that will measure my own heart rate and assess whether I independently can get into this uh, rhythm of heart coherence. But at some point I will be joined by a group of people who are skilled at entering this state and we'll test whether there's a, a group field effect that begins to influence me once they enter the room by watching what happens to my recordings on the monitor. I'll be blind though because I'll be wearing these and covering my ears with these so that my own cognitive reaction and awareness of their presence won't be the key variable. So whatever change happens will be because my nervous system out of my conscious awareness responds to the coherent energy field that the group is able to create. And we're assuming that something similar happens at a baseball game when enough crowd people are in a state of appreciation and enjoyment that it begins to entrain the baseball players to enter into a coherent state that enhances their actual performance in the game itself. Well, we've actually done some experiments showing that small groups of people can affect outcomes of other experimental processes. And it's really not a very big jump, because we, all, we already know that human-to-human -human interaction is not only possible, occurs, whether we believe it or not. These, these things are going on, or like it or not, this, this really is occurring. So we're able to, uh, in a very, fairly straightforward way with, uh, in our lab, show that one person's heartbeat, every time that, radio, that wave of energy is traveling out, we can now hook up another person and detect that that field is showing up in another person's brain waves, their nervous system. So we can measure this, this energetic interaction between people in a very rigorous scientific way. Okay, so we can see now that he's 100% incoherent. Take off your How'd I do? Your earplugs, yeah. How'd I do? <laughs> Experiment actually worked. Really? It really did. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. thanks, guys. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the, um, I don't know if we have it all on film or not. We better. <laughs> this is the whole section here where you were by yourself. Okay. And then they came in about right in here. Okay. And then I, they. Whoa, they, something happened. And then I signaled them to shift into the coherent state and send you uh, positive intention. And then we see that he, right after that, he indeed shifted into a, I uh, mean, actually, a, this is a, a very profound shift in terms of what's going on inside of his body. And this is what we, we call coherence. Uh, so this is really an optimal state. And now Rick's own energetic field, his, the magnetic field of the heart, is also much more coherent now when he's in this state. And we see that shift down here. We're tracking his coherence level. Here it went up and down some. Again, he was trying to be coherent. Here's where the group came into the room and waited a, a, a little bit. And then they shifted into coherence right in here. And then we see that dramatic increase in Rick's coherence. First step was showing that, yes, the, the signal is detected. It gets there. The more intriguing thing is we've been able to show that the information contained on those fields or modulated in those fields is, is different depending on the emotional state that we're in. And it has a direct mathematical correlation back to our heart's rhythmic patterns. Therefore, if we're in an uh, a, a appreciative, appreciative state, you know, we're really caring or appreciating or passionate in a positive way, that literally informs the patterns of these magnetic waves. If we're in a negative state, we're upset and angry or frustrated, well that also informs the waves, but in a very different pattern. You definitely want to have uh, positivity going on around you and, 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 and 
the result of things that you go for is just going to be totally different, but the way, the way you want it. Well, I guess the key question for me is, when I'm in this state, can I hit a curveball? <laughs> yes, we've done experiments that show that when you're in a coherent state, your reaction times are quite a bit faster. Wow. It's about 37 so. milliseconds, on a, in fact, which is the equivalent of 10 miles an hour difference in a pitch. So in other words, if a pitcher threw a ball at 90 miles an hour and you were in a coherent state, you would perceive it like it was 80. That's the difference that could make the difference. And fans can harness the power of their own positive emotions to create one huge energy field that entrains the players. Maybe someday we'll have pre-game heart coherence meditation for everyone.